we can be the best team in North America. But unless we start beating these foreign teams, nobody's gonna care about us. It was much harder to get to the world this year, but we did. I think we can do it, like Taipei Assassins did. I want it. But I imagine it as a really big cup that you have to hold with both arms. I would love to be able to just try to put it out. <laughs> I want to play the Korean teams again. I just really wanted another shot at them. So our world, we're going to get that shot and we're going to, we're going to win. Trash Talk Club was a Tobari, Manasa, Chikjo. You have to prove we are on par with the rest of the world. We have entire year on our backs right now. We present the year and we have to make them proud. 14 teams. May the best win. The biggest event in esports begins right here. from Los Angeles, California, and it's going to be a great show here with this incredible studio audience. And over the next 20 days, the top 14 teams from around the globe will battle for the Season 3 title and the Summoner's Cup. Every League of Legends team on the planet has been fighting for a spot in the World Championship since Season 3 began. And today we kick off the battle for the title with 10 group stage matches, starting with the winner of the international wildcard, Gaming Gear EU, taking on North America's Team Solo Mid. But before we get to our first game, let's take a tour of our League of Legends studio, home of the Season 3 World Championship Group Stage and Quarterfinals, starting with Jat and D-Man at the caster desk. Hi, guys. Thank you very much, Sox. I am Lee D-Man Smith, and alongside me is Joshua Jat Leesman. And this is where our team of broadcasters will be bringing you the play-by-play -play for all 40 games of the group stage as well as the four corner final matchups next week. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of games, but every single one of them is going to be amazing. And now let's actually send it over to Joe, who's hanging out in the interview lounge. Thanks a lot, guys. And hello, everyone. I'm Joe Miller, and this is where we'll be talking with some of the best players on the planet. Like our first guest of the World Championship, OMG's top laner, Go Going. He'll be joining me up here in the interview lounge after our first match of the day. So get comfy on your couch. I'll stretch out here on mine as we send it over to Quickshot and Freak on the analyst desk. 
Thank you very much, Joe. I am Trevor Quickshot Henry alongside David Freak Turley here at the Analyst Desk. And this is the spot where we will be breaking down the biggest plays, setting up the games, and making our predictions for the Season 3 World Championship. Plus, during our World Championship broadcast, we will be joined by a few friends to help us dissect the competition. Today, we are pleased to be joined by OGN's caster Monte Cristo, the Evil Geniuses support Crepo, and the North American All Star CLG Double Up. Welcome to the desk, guys. Thanks, guys. Well, before we get to the action on the rift, we do need to set up how the Season 3 World Championship works. You guys may want to be taking some notes. There are 14 teams competing in this tournament. Three from North America, three from Europe, three from Korea, two squads from Southeast Asia and Taiwan, as well as two from China, and one more from the wildcard team. And the top seeds from North America, Korea, China, and Southeast Asia, Taiwan, all got buys into the quarterfinals because of their region's performance at the 2013 All-Star event. Yeah, what that actually means is that North America's Cloud9, China's Royal Club, Korea's Najin Black Sword, and Southeast Asia's Gamma Bears are automatically into that top eight. Joining those four squads in the quarterfinals will be the top four teams from the group stage that's kicking off here today. And the winners of those quarterfinal best of three series move into the semifinals, taking place September 27th and 28th at the Galen Center, which is the home of the Season 2 World Championship. And now, heads up, guys, there are still a few tickets available for the semifinals if you want to see the top four teams in the world live. Head over to lolesports.com slash tickets for information on how to get your seats. Yeah, both of those semifinal series will be best of five, with a victor moving into the grand finals that are being held at LA Staples Center on October the 4th. And that's going to be an incredible event at an amazing venue because the two top teams in the world are competing in a best of five for the Season 3 title and the Summoner's Cup. All right, so now you know where the journey ends. Let's dial it back a notch and bring it back to the beginning. Today, the World Championship Tournament kicks off with the group stage. The 10 teams who didn't get a first round bye have been divided into two groups. And after much deliberation, focus testing, we've decided to call them Group A and B. But for the group stage, each team will play each other team in the group twice. After that, each team, after they play their eight games, the top two teams from each group will advance to the quarterfinals to face their opponents. All right, let's actually take a look at that group stage, starting with Group A. It is, of course, the first team going to be the international wildcard champs, Lithuania's Gaming Gear EU. We're also going to see Korea's third seed, SKT T1, as well as China's second seed, OMG. And rounding out the group is Europe's runner-ups, the Lemon Dogs, along with North America's second squad, Team Solo Mid. All right, now that we have met the teams behind door number one, let's take a look at the five squads over in Group B, starting with the only team to win their region, but not get a bye, Europe's Fnatic. And Gambit will also be wrapping Europe in that group, along with the Philippines' Mineski, North America's Vulcan, and Korea's Samsung Galaxy Ozone, the team formerly known as MVP Ozone. Those are the 10 teams fighting for only four spots in the quarterfinals. But right now, I do want to concentrate on five of them. The teams in Group A, so that includes OMG, Lemon Dogs, SKT, TSM, and Gaming Gear. And let's actually open this one up to the panel. I want to ask you guys, which two teams do you think are actually going to advance out of Group A and into the quarterfinals? Let's kick this one off with Monty. Well, I believe that SK Telecom is the favorite for the entire World Championship, so I'm definitely picking them to make it out of the groups. Beyond that, I think it's a tough call, but I'm going to take OMG. They were very consistent in China up until the regionals where they took second place. But Lemon Dogs is a big threat as well. Nuke Doc is a very good mid laner, but... OMG, SKTT1 for me. Freak, what about yourself? Uh, so I agree with you that SKT is a, is a really strong team, and they're one of my favorites for the tournament as well. But I think Lemon Dog is going to do a very amazing job. As you mentioned, Nuke Duck is an incredible player. And a team that, that held on and got first place in basically the group stage of Europe is going to hold on to the top two of the group stage here. I'm really glad Freak's wrapping the EU scene here, but uh, I think I have to agree with Monte here. Uh, SKT1 and OMG are just... Two, two really strong powerhouses. I mean, Lemon Dogs have the tools to beat them, but my, my money is on uh, SKT1 and OMG. What about yourself, Double? If you're one and two, who's it going to be? Yeah, as much as I hate to agree with Monty, I got to <laughs> agree with him this time for once because he's, he's right. Uh, SKTT1 is a Korean monster. There's no denying that they're just really, really strong looking in this tournament. And OMG, like, they've dominated the Chinese scene for so long. I think they're going to show like, exactly why they did that. Okay, so I've got another question for you guys. Now, you've talked about your one and two, and you, you don't like agreeing with Monty. Let's see if we differ <laughs> here. Uh, who's your dark horse team in Group A, Doublelift? 
I think Lemon Dogs is really underexposed, and they the Western teams and the Asian teams might underestimate them because of kind of like their funny name and the fact that they just lack exposure. You know, they're not a big name like Fnatic. Uh, they dominated Europe for so long. I feel like they are the dark horse. People will underestimate them, and they will potentially upset some better teams. Krepa? I completely agree with Double Lift here. Like Lemon Dogs were undervalued and underexposed. Their top laner and their mid laner have a really interesting synergy that might actually upset all of these teams. Although they have this specific style of playing, but I think the Asian teams have really good scouting, as Monte can probably second me on that one. Yeah, and Lemon Dogs has a specific style of playing. I'm picking them for my Dark Horse too, and even though it probably has been uh, scouted out, they were number one in the EULCS regular season for a reason, and they shouldn't be underestimated here. So, Well, you're absolutely right. They shouldn't be underestimated. And you guys are all crazy because Lemon Dogs are going to take top two. That doesn't make them a dark horse <laughs> in the first place. Uh, to me, the dark horse is actually gaming gear because I think everyone's underestimating them very heavily, but they have the absolute potential to take games off people. And we'll have to see if they can make it work. The key to taking those games is going to be with the players themselves. And for many of the people tuning into this broadcast, they'll be seeing a lot of these teams and a lot of these players competing live for the very first time. So for those of you who have never watched SKT's world-class mid laner, Faker, he's my pick as far as the player to watch is concerned. He's really dominated the Korean mid lane scene. And I think every mid laner in the world wants to tee up against him and see how they do. So that's who I'm going to be watching. I want to know who are you guys going to be watching for the rest of Group A. Monty, your thoughts? Of course we can talk about Faker all day, but for me, it's uh, Pumandu from SK Telecom T1. He's their captain. He's the heart of the team, an extremely aggressive support player, known for picking up first blood, and uh, Nami and Zyra, his two champs of choice. So ag aggressive support player, known for stealing first blood. Scumbag Crepper, your player to watch? <laughs> yeah, that was kind of my pick as well. Thank you, Monty. <laughs> um, no, if I have to, I'll just wrap some European scene here then. I want to see Zora Zero. He has a very like push and roam style that always helps Nuke Duck in his lane. I want to see Zora Zero push his lane up, disappear, and take Faker down with, uh, with Nuke Duck in the mid lane. I, I like it. We've got a, a differing of opinion here. Double left, who's your player to watch? Uh, well, many people don't know who he is. Cool from OMG. He's the MVP of China. And when I watch him play, I'm like, wow, this guy is a playmaker. He's like the cornerstone of his team. Uh, I feel like if Cool has a good game, there's no way OMG can lose. All right, well, for me, I got to go with another mid laner, though, but Reginald from TSM. I think that he will determine whether TSM does well or crashes and burns in the group stage here. So eyes are on him for the Group A North American Hope. A lot of pressure is going to rest on these players' shoulders to help their team get through the groups. And we'll be seeing those players get into action as soon as the Season 3 Championship kicks off with five games in Group A. Up first, the international wildcard champs Gaming Gear EU take on North America's Team Solo Mid. After that, it's Korea's SKT T1 versus Europe's Lemon Dogs. And the third game will be Team Solo Mid once again, it's this time challenging China's OMG. And that's followed by the Lemon Dogs trying to take a bite out of Gaming Gear EU, and OMG looking to take down SKT1. Then, after a quick reset here in the studio, Group B takes the rift for five more matches, starting with North America's Vulcan taking on the European champions, Fnatic. All right, now it is time to put you guys on the spot and get your predictions on which teams will win the first three games of the day. Full disclosure here, we are actually going to be tracking all of your answers throughout Worlds, so good luck, have fun, and no pressure. <laughs> Up first, Lithuania's Gaming Gear, who's coming into this World Championship group stage as a bit of an underdog, taking on North America's most popular squad, Team mm -hmm. Solo Mid. So Freak, who's going to win it? So, uh, I thought it just said that the Dark Horse was gaming gear and that they were going to look really good. <laughs> I think there's like a small edge to TSM, but it's like 60-40, it's, like it's close. Monty? Yeah, I agree with Freak. I think this one's really difficult to call because we've seen Mazarin and Alanir's synergy when it comes to taking down enemy mid laners. Key to beating TSM is taking down Reggie, but I still have to say TSM for me too. I'm going to go with TSM. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, as well, I think TSM has the edge here, but uh, like Monty said, if Mazarin has a good game, the EU mid metagame is so far ahead of the other regions. I feel like Mazarin can definitely beat Reggie. Well, we're going to have to keep our eyes on that one. The game will be starting shortly. Match 2 features a couple of the Group A favorites. Korea's SKT T1 and their incredible mid laner Faker versus Europe's top team for the regular season, the Lemon Dogs. Now, I want to do this in starting with double lifts. Who do you think is going to take it? Well, SKTT1 is just a monster, dude. They're too godlike right now. Like, it's too... I, I would say it's really ambitious to say Lemon Dogs is going to take this one, so I'm going with SKT. Krepa, you, you know Lemon Dogs pretty well. What do you think? I know them really well. They're good friends of mine. I'd love for them to win, but not picking SKT1 here would piss off a certain <laughs> analyst. <that I> <laughs> 
So ask a T1. <laughs> I think lemon dogs are great, but I got to go with the T1 here. Oh, wow. <laughs> right, Freak. Well, Unlike you, Crepo, I am happy to stand up to Monte Cristo. I just won't this time. I think that <laughs> the Koreans of SKT won their individual plays too good, and they just won OGN Champions Summer. They're clearly on form, so SKT won for me. So everybody's in agreement for the first two games. You're either going to be very happy or very sad as these results roll in. The third match of the day sees Team Solo Mid heading back to the Rift, this time against OMG. Now, they were the first team in China for most of Season 3, and of course they have that uh, Chinese MVP that Doublelift was talking about, Cool. He's running in the mid lane, of course. So, Monty, your thoughts on the Chinese powerhouse, and we'll see how they're going to do against TSM? I think this is actually a really bad matchup stylistically for TSM because both teams really like to 5v5 fight. However, OMG's team fight is nearly perfect, uh, and it has been for quite some time. So, you want to beat OMG? You split push. I don't see TSM coming out. OMG for this one. Krepa? If you see who, who OMG has been playing the entire season, and they have like a team fight style, which TSM generally likes doing as well, early dragons contesting that and all. I just, I see no way OMG is gonna lose this one. Ooh, strong words. Double lift? As well, I think uh, <laughs> TSM will fall right into the Chinese metagame, which is exactly what OMG wants, because they're the best at that. They're the best at team fighting, and TSM wants a team fight, which is not what you do to win against OMG. I think you guys are counting out TSM a little bit too much. No, I, to be fair, my pick is also OMG. I think they're stronger. <laughs> wow. But I think they're stronger at individual play, more so than on team mechanics. TSM's been team fighting longer than OMG has. They've got synergy there. They can actually play that game just fine. But I think they'll fall behind early, and that's why uh, OMG wins. Well, maybe, maybe TSM will pull out something exciting like a Xin Zhao Annie bottom lane. We'll see. <laughs> now, that, uh, now that you guys have heard our predictions, we want to hear yours. So hit us up on Twitter and tell us who do you think is the strongest team in Group A and why? Our Twitter handle is at LOL Esports, and be sure, to, be sure to use the hashtag Worlds. We'll be reading our favorite responses later on in the show, and if we pick yours, you'll win a Logitech G602 as gaming mouse. Yep. Then when you're done making your champ selection, head over to lolesports.com and try to predict the outcomes of all of today's group stage games. Click on Schedule in the top right, go to Day 1, and give a thumbs up to the teams you think will be winning. We are going to be checking out your votes before every match, and I don't want to put any pressure on you guys out there, but you will be competing against the analysts all week long to earn the title of Best Prognosticator Worlds. And in some very exciting news, now you and your friends can see if your predictions come true as you watch the tournament action in high definition on your Roku box. Head over to lolesports.com for details on how to stream the Season 3 World Championship on your big screen with Roku. All right, guys, we do have to take a very quick break, but when we return, it's time to kick off Worlds. D-Man and Jack will bring you the play-by-play -play as Gaming Gear EU and Team Solo Mid throw down in our first match of the Season 3 Championship. Stick around, we'll be right back. <laughs> 